one of the biggest comments and questions involving Starfield is the use of procedural generation. Will we be getting entirely explorable planets, dozens of places that we can go to, land on, go through ruins and mines and caves and whatever else might be waiting for us, or alternatively, will it be used more conservatively, similar to what we've seen in the past, with procedural generation doing a bulk of the landscaping, followed by the developers going in and fine-tuning everything to make each environment unique and explorable and worth quite frankly, our time to dive into. How is it going, everybody? My name is DeMarco, and today I'm going to tackle the problem of procedural generation within Starfield. And I know not everybody is going to be happy with this video. A lot of folks are hoping that we do, in fact, get massively procedurally generated worlds that we can go to and explore. Some are hoping for a hybrid system. I've seen comments involving, well, what if we just take some procedurally generated planets and then some handcrafted planets, and the handcrafted ones are where all the stories and the main quests take place and the procedural ones are where all of the side stuff takes place and the radiant quests get sent to and that sort of thing. In order to truly dive into how Starfield will be utilizing procedural generation, we have to take a look at what they have done in the past, what would work in the context of a Bethesda game, and some of Todd Howard's and Bethesda's comments involving how their worlds are crafted and what they like about their game. So for starters, I want to try to debunk the idea that we'll be getting multiple dozens of planets. One of the biggest issues you'll run into is a stark contrast between the handcrafted worlds and the procedurally generated worlds. It's one thing to say, hey, we have all this content, go ahead and explore it, but when you're juxtaposing one against the other, it's hard to justify why players would want to spend any amount of time in the ones that are randomized, that have more potential to be boring or less interesting or less engaging than the ones that Bethesda specifically spent time on. The best example I can give is if you would prefer to explore a Skyrim dungeon versus an Oblivion dungeon. In Oblivion, Bethesda's admitted, once you've seen one, you've seen them all, but Skyrim, every dungeon exists with a purpose. They're designed around the person that might be buried there, or the time that they were built, or whatever other factors came into play. Just simple cool factor is definitely one of them. But every single dungeon was completely different from the other, and this is something Bethesda received tons of praise for when Skyrim initially launched. For Bethesda to suddenly turn around and go, you know what? No, we're going to go ahead with the procedural generation. Make the dungeons randomized. Make the locations randomized. Hell, make the planet randomized. Of course, I am talking about the extreme example, right? We'll talk about the most likely scenario in a bit. But for Bethesda to turn around and say all this would be a little bit, well, it's not in their agenda. It's not typically in their playbook. And I think it's a far stretch to assume that this is a likely route that they will take. When you hop into a Bethesda game, they've been using procedural generation for years and they've garnered a lot of experience and when you hop into a Bethesda game one of the things that receives the most praise is the world itself so if you took all of the soul and all of the love out of that world, which is the handcrafted part, what you're left with is essentially a husk of a Bethesda game, for lack of a better term. Bethesda's worlds are unanimously one of the best parts about their games, and that comes with a lot of aspects, specifically the fact that they are handcrafted, the environmental storytelling that takes place within them, the fact that you can explore this world, and then every single time there's a good possibility you'll see something that you've never seen before. Those secrets videos coming from the likes of ESO or something that rely on those handcrafted worlds and it's things that make these worlds truly as magical as they can be and it wouldn't be like Bethesda to stray too far from that. Now I know that one of the biggest concerns when we talk about well there probably won't be the procedural generation for the worlds that a lot of folks are hoping for. One of the big concerns that gets raised as a result is well then we're gonna just see a bunch of tiny map sizes everywhere but that is actually not the case whatsoever. In fact, when we hear Todd talking about how they've improved their procedural generation systems, this is likely in reference to being able to build bigger worlds that start off with a better template for the developers to work on and to handcraft. In this way, we'll see something more in line with The Witcher or Red Dead Redemption, where the spaces are much more open between locations, but the worlds themselves still remain beautiful and they still remain tailored for what they're trying to get across, whether it's narratively or environmentally. When you look at the map of Fallout 76, it features exactly this. You get to see a much larger game space for you to go and explore, but there's less things in between each of those areas. So you do spend more time wandering, 
from location to location and in the sense of starfield assuming that many of these locations will be very minimally inhabited yes this will absolutely be more barren it will be much more uncharted than what we've seen with fallout where the wasteland has been covered by explorers or skyrim or elder scrolls where the maps have already been generated of the world much of this might still be pretty new for explorers to go out and discover hence the purpose of constellation still being around procedural generation at its best works when the game design revolves around procedurally generated or infinite content you look at titles such as no man's sky which even then its planets aren't the best thing about the game but it's based around the infinite amount of content look at a more linear or narrow game smaller in scope like darkest dungeon or slay the spire these titles are something that offer procedurally generated environments but it's based around continuously looping and continuing through. That is the objective of the game. And even then, we're not talking about procedural generation on a humongous scale. We're talking about you enter this encounter or this encounter, and it's one of 30 that are possible to come up in any given situation. Again, and last time I'm going to say this, the procedural generation is best used to make the general landscape that Bethesda can then craft by hand. And that's why in my previous video, I speculate that we'll likely be seeing a around four or five planets at most based on where each of these factions reside on and that would still be a great thing because the scale of them you can make massive areas and then you won't run into the issue of these clashing environments with one that feels like it was made with lots of love and one that feels like it was spit out by a computer but other ways that bethesda can utilize this procedural generation is with for example the radiant quest system i know it's a bit of a mixed bag for a lot of folks however being able to pick up random quests that take you to locations that you've never been before is a pretty effective means to get you encouraged to go off and explore and if Bethesda can utilize this in such a way where it fully works to flesh out the game right one thing one complaint I had about Skyrim in particular was how quickly you fly through the ranks in some of the factions like the companions or the college of Winterhold you really don't get assigned that many tasks outside of hey go kill this monster okay congratulations you're promoted to the next level or whatever it might be being able to fill in some of these gaps with procedurally generated content whether that is the quest itself or whether that's where the location sends you within the locations available in the game is something that can benefit to stretch out the lifetime of this game to make sure that todd does hit that 10 year goal that he's hoping for that number does scare me but that 10 year goal or that extended lifetime that todd is looking to recapture improving other aspects like the enemy variety that you come across in the dungeon instead of just different versions of draugr that all behave the same way utilizing procedural generation to make more interesting encounters when you do come across them and this could actually work to improve the way that difficulty works in the game which is a complaint that i've expressed previously or better loot generation generation for some of their NPCs so these common bandits aren't obtaining ebony armor and ebony greaves or whatever else they might have come across that they have something that's more fitting for what they would be able to get <laughs> mods like morrow loot help to balance this out so that enemies are wearing appropriate gear and things that are supposed to be rare like ebony equipment are hard to come across. The last aspect I want to talk about is people saying that it would work for space and ship exploration. This is under the presumption that you will be able to pilot your own ship, which again, I don't think is the case. I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I just don't know if it's worth the time and the resources that it would take to develop those systems in a Bethesda game. Maybe they could prove me wrong. I'm happy if they can. However, procedurally generating some kind of space structure so while you are exploring you might come across some kind of random thing in space and this way they can keep the tra travel between planets more interesting again i think you're going to run into a problem where you start seeing the same things over and over while the idea of coming across a randomly spawned space station might seem exciting when it comes down to it what you'll start noticing is the same type of rooms and the same type of enemies and the same encounters the only thing that really differs between the two is the layout of them and how they're structured in the map that you go to explore 
explore once you finally do get to that section, that procedurally generated content. What it comes down to is that procedural generation should be used as a helping tool, but not as a crutch to develop these systems. And I think Bethesda is well aware of that. And I feel as though folks who are hoping for more than just that, who are hoping for those dozens of planets, will find themselves disappointed ultimately when Starfield comes out. If you disagree with me, let me know what you think and why down in the comment section below. But that's all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like on the video. And again, look forward to hearing your feedback. And I hope to see you all next time. So long, everybody.